Well, hello and uh, welcome back uh, to Plinac Perspective. Uh, my name is Christophe Boyle and I'm finally back online after a long break uh, caused obviously by uh, COVID and uh, several other situations. I have decided to show you today this uh, painting because uh, I'm actually going back home to France uh, in a few weeks and I'm going to be going painting obviously up in the mountains and I'm going to be doing a few demonstrations while I'm there but I wanted to show you also how I paint the mountains uh, where I come from which is in Chamonix in the French Alps So before we go any further, let me show you what I'm going to teach you or show you how I paint my mountains. So here it is. This is um, a view from uh, the Swiss border uh, towards the Mont Blanc, um, which is the highest mountain of Europe. Um, so before I say before we go any further, I wish you all uh, don't uh, speaking French now. Uh, I wish you all um, a pleasant time watching this little video. So let's do it and let's roll the introduction. Let's do it. five colors, titanium white, cerium blue, ultramarine blue, raw sienna, and paint gray. So basically I start uh, the sky, which is the furthest away, and I'm just using a bit of the cerium blue and white to work the base of the sky so that uh, I can define my mountains from the start and give myself a bit of an idea of the values I'll be using for uh, the rest of uh, the painting. Now I've added a bit of uh, ultramarine blue into the sky mixture just to make a bit more contrast and uh, now I'm just playing them together uh, which is pretty normal because in the Alps in mountains higher in altitude you always have a lighter color at the base and a darker shade on the top. And now I'm just start painting the, uh, the furthest mountain, even though it looks quite dark there, I'll be covering them in, uh, in white and well, for most of it. So I'm just uh, using a bit of liquid as well, medium to uh, let to dry quicker. And I'm just using a bit of ultramarine blue, a little bit of Payne's gray and the mixture from the sky, just uh, to get you started. Now I've added a bit more uh, ultramarine blue. And I'm just adding a set to get a bit of definition onto those mountains. Again, a bit more ultramarine blue, just to give a bit more relief. Uh, those mountains are in the shade and uh, even though they are a long way away, there's still a bit uh, of, uh, of darker shade coming through, obviously. Still modeling the mountains as I go along. Now what I've done here is I've used uh, the uh, raw sienna 
or sorry, raw amber uh, with a bit of the uh, sky mixture and um, just to give that sort of lovely bluey grey uh, which we find uh, in the mountains because the, the cliffs uh, are, are that colour. Uh, it's a lot of granite and the, the granite is fairly light in shade and colour and especially when it's in full sun uh, you can see that uh, And obviously still modeling those lovely mountains. Uh, they are very uh, complicated, uh, you, you know, when you look at them in real life, but uh, you have to simplify a little bit as we go along. Now I've you noticed I've gone pretty dark uh, onto that uh, mountain, but again, because we're closer, uh, the, the, the shade and the, um, the shadow are a lot darker as we get closer. And again, I'm just trying to give a bit more definition as we go along. Now I'm starting to put uh, the the shade color that uh, we see of the snow. And that mixed uh, is basically a bit of a, a chroma blue with the white and tiny bit of ultramarine. And the darker color was more ultramarine with the paint gray. And I'm just working the various area of dark shade of the snow. With the painting the mountain, it's really all about working one spot at a time and trying to understand the geometry and the, the formation of the mountain. Uh, if we understand where they are, how far they are, uh, it's a lot easier to work out, you know, the, the composition as well as the colors we need to give them, to give them the definition and the distance necessary so we understand what's happening. Again, now I've got a bit more raw amber into my mixture from before. So again, we get a bit closer and therefore the mountains are a little bit darker, but not super dark because there's still a lot of snow on the on the slopes of the rock and i would be adjusting those all the time this is just my first pass i'm just getting an idea of, of the colors and values and shape of the mountains as i go along and it's still the same colors And you probably find the more time you spend outside, uh, especially in the mountain, you get to understand the mountain a lot more. Uh, it's one of those things where you have to be there to, in order to understand. Now again, I'm just making those uh, rocks a little bit darker because they've been a bit closer. So it's more ultramarine and paint gray. And this is the, for the closest one. So again, a little bit darker, more ultramarine, more paint gray. Now I'm starting to put uh, that rock uh, in the foreground and I'm just starting to work on the colors of the, the glacier. Uh, those glaciers just uh, basically in summertime, they have a lot of soft dirt and rocks and rubbles and all sorts of things and uh, they, they collect basically all the rocks and bits and pieces. Now I'm starting to put uh, a layer of the snow. It's not pure white, it's got a bit of ultramarine and uh, chromium blue in it because I don't want to go for my you know highest intensity white. I'm just soft coloring my first pass just to get an idea of where the painting is heading, whether it feels right and how much adjustment I need to go and do as I progress. Uh, I'm being a climber myself and uh, when I sell my work uh, people are very, very, uh, how would you put it, um, uh, very keen climbers so the mountains have to be correct 
um, people are very, very uh, good at finding out when it's not right. They need to recognize where they've been, what they've done, where they climbed. So yeah, keeping a minimum amount of accuracy is very important when you paint the mountains. And, and the more complicated the mountains, the more accurate they need to be because I said the people that will climb them uh, really know those mountains very well and, and they know when you paint the wrong way. So accuracy is very important. And the line of the brush as well, because you have to understand that the snow obviously goes down the hill, but you need to try to understand the, the, the way the, the snow forms when it comes down the mountains. It will slide down and uh, create those crevasses along the way. So you need to understand how it works and follow the line. You know, you can't put a, a, an horizontal line when you need to have a vertical line and vice versa. Just putting a bit of, you know, definition in the background where that snow is, you know, rolling down. And this is the Aiguille Verte. Uh, all those mountains are nearly all over between three and a half and four thousand meters or higher. And now you have noticed the sun has come through my window on the left side, so I need to bring the blind down. I apologize for the the change in colors, but uh, that's the first day and the first pass. So whether I'm right or wrong is not too important here. I said that that, that day was really just to cover the the, the board. And by the way, I'm using. Uh, an MDF of three millimeters. Now, this is day two, and um, oh, I've just realized something's not quite right, but never mind. <laughs> never mind, we'll just go with that anyway, uh, because on the previous video, the snow was already there, so I apologize for the order of the video. Um, but obviously, yes, I had to put that rock on the foreground just to break the line. And the mixture I'm using for those uh, blues is just basically ultramarine blue, that cobalt chromium, and a bit of white. Ah, here we go. Sorry about that little misunderstanding. <laughs> oh well, I'll do better next time. All right, so we're back into the uh, the, the mountains, and I'm just uh, putting the highlights, and then just emphasizing, just trying to get my reference of where I'm heading. This is still the first pass, and basically day one. And I say I'm using the Queen all the way and therefore it's um, dry. Now this is the beginning of day two and I'm basically going over the sky first. So still the same uh, ultramarine, uh, sorry, uh, a little bit of chromium blue, white and then now the ultramarine on the top just to give it a bit more height. And because the paint is dry, I can easily go over. And now I'm just defining this is the Mont Blanc in the background, the highest mountain in Europe. And uh, it's surrounded by a glacier. So because it's so far away, I don't uh, really need to give it too much details. But enough so that when we look at it, we know where it is and what it is. And those mountains are all around 4,000 meters or higher. The Mont Blanc is 4,810 meters. So 
So just uh, trying to give a bit of form. Adding a few shadows here and there. The shadows are very light, ultramarine blue, white, and a tiny bit of chromium blue. Now in the next uh, valley or the next, uh, the next uh, row of mountains, this is the Lake du Midi. And uh, it's basically in front of the Mont Blanc there, but because it's more or less hidden, I don't want to give it too much importance. And again, I'm just keeping my whitest white for a bit later. So redefining the mountain a little bit. And again, make it a bit more accurate. As I say the people that uh, live in the Alps and buy those paintings, they just know so they need to look right. I mean, you could spend hours, you know, defining those mountains, but, uh, you know, it's not always possible. <laughs> Especially this is more of a study. Now I'm working again on the glacier, just adding a few more details here and there because the snows and the, the fields are all cracked from various crevasses and uh, you know it, it, it brings a lot of interest to the mountains. It gives them definition and relief. There's nothing more boring than looking at a mountain with no shape or no relief. You have to feel the mountain, you have to feel the slope, you have to feel the weather. You have to feel like you either want to be there or you want to go there. And that's what people are looking for when they buy those paintings. It brings back those amazing memories All I'm doing now is just basically just fine tuning, just trying to add a few more details, which uh, even on small painting like this eventually would make a big difference. But you don't want to go again over the top, it has to be live impressionistic. And uh, I'm saying to use a thicker paint on the white now. So white, it's a real white. And uh, when you see the painting under the light, those thick white lines really reflect the light so beautifully and gives it even more dimension. And that's what people are after. They want to see dimension, memories, and something pleasing for the eyes as well. And you find that uh, in the Alps, a lot of chalets uh, will have mountain paintings, obviously. People are very uh, keen to have those paintings. And when I paint on location, uh, it, it, it's wonderful to see those paintings being hanged into those chalets and that people are actually enjoying them. Now I'm just trying to again uh, fine tune and put a few more reflections of snow. Um, because even though those rocks are bare and it's uh, probably towards the uh, the summer times, um, there's still a lot of snow that hanging onto the rocks and the cliffs. And now with a bit of white and the raw amber, I'm just uh, giving a bit of definition on those rocks, a bit uh, a bit lighter value.
I mean, when you paint mountain, it's nothing difficult. It's really just a matter of knowing what you're trying to do, you're trying to visualize those mountains in your head. When you were there, what did they look like? Uh, and as you're painting, d d does it feel right? Oh dear, talking about feeling right. <laughs> I think I've bummed up that one again. But that's uh, that'll keep you guys interested. I'll do a better job next time. Obviously, when I'm loading those videos, they came in the wrong order. But anyway, that just keeps you interested. There you go, just to make sure you're still with me. I promise you I'll do a better job next time. I'm still learning, as you've noticed. But painting mountain is just, uh, yeah, just p constant refinement, you know. I say it's important to get it right, but you don't want to be obsessed with it, especially on a small scale like that. As long as you've got the right values, the right colors, the right mood, the right design, it will work. And don't be afraid to step back quite regularly. Okay, you need to look back at those mountains and see if they make sense to you. The brushes I'm using are, are very straightforward. A uh, couple of uh, round nylons, a uh, small filbert. I mean, if you looked up close to those mountains, I say you, <laughs> you'd see so many more details. But I said to you, as long as you get the right colors, the right values, and keep the right feel about the snow coming down, as you can see now, you can see on the second pass the difference of value in the white. It's a much whiter white, and therefore it brings out those mountains quicker in front of you. And the thicker you're gonna put the paint on, the more forward they'll come to you. So don't be afraid to paint mountains. They're a lot of fun. And uh, once you get started, it's hard to stop because uh, it becomes very addictive. I mean, I've been painting mountains now uh, for probably three to five years. And uh, of course I go home every year and uh, try to refine my style and my colors and then everything else. But it is always such a pleasure to paint them. As soon as I paint them, I'm at home. Yeah, I'm just adding a little bit of ultramarine blue just because uh, the, the, when the sun doesn't hit the, the snow, the, the snow is actually quite blue. And I'm just working on the slope of that big field. And on the left hand side where I am now, where the sun is hitting, it's a lot more white obviously. As you can see, I'm not very careful with uh, my brush or anything at this stage. I'm just covering the board. 
and just try to give it the right feel, the right distance, and um, make it work. And just think about your shadows, you know, you, there, there's so many areas which are in shadows because the mountains are very steep. Well, especially in the Alps, where the French, Italian or Alps are very steep. If you do get a chance to go, make sure you do go because they are absolutely magnificent mountains. And with the uh, global warming, unfortunately, we don't know how much longer we'll have those glaciers for. So this is a bit my legacy to my home and show to myself and to maybe the future generation that will keep more those paintings, what it was like. Because the way we are going, I suppose in two or three hundred years, most of those mountains glacier would probably be gone. And we are just very privileged to have seen them. Now you can see it's really taking shape. I've got uh, a lot more details onto my rocks. I'm doing a bit more white to emphasize the contrast on that slope. Still adding more white just to give again that relief to the mountains. You can nearly feel that bowl of fresh air. Just working a little bit uh, of details on the glacier. You can see those little marks do make a little bit of difference. It's just really just fine tuning, going back and forth, back and forth, until you feel like you get those mountains right. You need to have the distance, the shape, and the right feel. And don't be afraid to get it wrong. The worst you can do is mess up and just paint over it. Right now, I'm just painting the rock that's at the foreground. And all I'm doing is just a bit of a ultramarine blue paints gray and a few highlights with the, the white. And just alter, altering the shape of the rock a little bit. Having that rock in the foreground just increase the distance. Otherwise, there'd be too much white and you get lost. So with those lines created by the glacier, you can sort of go back and forth to all the different summits and back down the valley and so on. Just fine tuning the slope, trying to give it a bit of definition with the different values in the slope formation. And those are the reflection of the mountains on the other side. And don't be afraid to use your fingers. Fingers are fantastic. Uh, <laughs> a really good way to blend. I use them all the time. It's a great way to put DNA into your work. Again, just fine tuning, just putting a few more reflections, just altering the blues a little bit, putting a bit more white or a bit more cobalt, depending on how I feel it should go. Again, I'm very lucky because I was born in those mountains, so I know the one colors I'm looking for. And there's nothing quite like being there and you need to paint them. 
If you paint from a photo, you probably find they're always oversaturated, as you may have see on the side uh, of my panel here. You can see on the left side on my iPad how saturated the colors are. But on my painting, you probably find the colors a lot more subdued. And in real life, they are. I mean, they can be extremely bright, especially at sun, sunset and sunrise. And the scan can just be on fire. But during the rest of the day, they can be quite subdued because the sun will just dominate the white of those snow. Again, just fine tuning, bits and pieces. Just trying to make it work and give me that feel that I am there. I'm standing on the on that rock and painting on those beautiful mountains. Now, if you have any questions. Please feel free to uh, send me uh, those questions below and I'll do my best to answer them. And if you ever decide to go into the French Alps, let me know. I'll give you the best address to have the best meals. And if you love cheese, well, this is the place for you. And smoked meat, because every time you go hiking in those mountains, you'll have to take a picnic with you. And there's a good chance it involves cheese smoked meat, baguette, and if you're lucky, a little bit of wine, but not too much, <laughs> otherwise you'd fall off those mountains. And never go alone unless you know what you're doing. All I'm doing now, as I said, just redefining the glacier. Just give it a relief. Using a small brush and broad stroke and quite a lot of thick white paint. As you can see now I can get a bit of a three-dimensional effect because the snow and the white I've used at the foreground is pure pure white and I'm putting more and more layer and it just intensifies the light. And I think we're nearly finished. So I hope you've enjoyed that. And I say, if you have any questions, please feel free to send me those questions. And I'll try to do my best to do a few more for you. Well, I hope I didn't bore you too much with this uh, painting and uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, as I say, hopefully I will have a few more regular paintings. I'm thinking of doing um, uh, something about uh, the glacier because I love painting glacier. Uh, they're just uh, the most exquisite uh, things to paint uh, because they're so abstract and uh, for a landscape painter, it's always a challenge. So stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe and uh, ring that bell so you get notified when I post another video. Thank you again so much for joining me today and I uh, look forward to you next time. Okay, bye-bye.